disavowed, disrespected, and occasionally even dismembered. Not a lot of good seems to come to women who associate too closely with dictators. In 1989, as the Iron Curtain started to fall across Eastern Europe, the reign of Romania's dictator Nicolae Ceausescu came to a sudden and dramatic end. The inflection point occurred during a speech that didn't get the normal cheers from the subjugated crowd, but booing instead. Years later, one witness told The Independent, I was there when the people turned. It was exhilarating because this man had ruled every aspect of our lives since before we could remember, and none of it had been good, whatever lies he had spun. By Christmas Day, a show trial resulted in a death sentence for both Nikolai and his wife Elena. The execution took place immediately. There are conflicting recollections about how Elena reacted to her imminent death, alternating from pleading to cursing those involved. One of the men in the firing squad, Yonel Boreru, told the British tabloid The Mirror, she yelled at a soldier, you mother f***er. Other sources reported that she said, why, why, I raised you like a mother. She said to be careful with her friends because uh, it could be broken. It doesn't matter if they are broken or not when you are going to die in five minutes. Other contemporary reports recorded that she tried to flee or openly wept. Boero told The Guardian that the pair were executed together as a kindness since they were in love, saying, I shot them very fast. I feel I helped them to die with dignity. Future Chinese dictator Mao Zedong had an arranged marriage as a teenager with a girl named Luo Yishu. The marriage was not a success, and Luo died less than two years later from illness. Later in life, Mao refused to even recognize the existence of the marriage. Mao chose the second wife, Yang Kai Hui, in 1920. In the private life of Chairman Mao, Mao's personal doctor, Li Ji Sui, concludes that the dictator did not register the suffering of other humans. That might be the reason he callously rejected Yang as well, although her death was very different from that of the woman who preceded her. Yang left writings showing she was aware that Mao was cheating on her. While she eventually lost faith in his politics, she still loved him, according to Mao, the unknown story. Mao, however, did not seem to return that affection. He was off fighting when he met another revolutionary, Han Zhejian. The couple married in 1928 without waiting for Mao to legally divorce Yang. Despite this rejection and abandonment, Yang stood by her husband to the very end. In 1930, she was captured by the Kuomintang, the nationalist Chinese government her communist husband was trying to overthrow. She chose death over betraying Mao to his enemies and was executed after being tortured. Mao Zedong's final marriage was to actress Zhang Qing, who would go on to become almost as infamous as her husband. He married her in 1939 after divorcing his third wife. When Zhang started throwing her political muscle around in the 1960s, she proved to be ruthless, helping mastermind the Cultural Revolution. Good evening. Mao Zedong, the most powerful influence on China since Confucius, has died at the age of 82. Mao died in 1976, and within a year, Zhang had also fallen. In 1980, she was put on trial for crimes committed during the Cultural Revolution and soon sentenced to death. Her defense, as quoted in the Washington Post, was that she did what Mao ordered her to do, or as she famously put it, I was Chairman Mao's dog. Whomever he told me to bite, I bit. The execution was delayed for two years, and in 1983, her sentence had been commuted to life in prison as she had reformed. Only four years later, Zhang was diagnosed with throat cancer. Before cancer could kill her, she died by suicide in 1991. China rejoiced at her death, with Shanghai's Liberation Daily stating, It goes without saying that death cannot expiate her crimes. The 1975-76 issue of Transition featured a profile of Ugandan dictator Idi Amin, but his wives got their own section, and for good reason. As the magazine poetically phrased it, The story of Amin will furnish some future Ugandan Shakespeare with more than enough material for an African Henry VIII. Idi Amin married numerous times and practiced polygamy. Keodroa wed the already married Edie in 1966, five years before he took power in Uganda. But by 1973, Edie's relationship with Kay had deteriorated completely. After he had a politician who had fallen from favor killed, Kay left him. In retaliation, Edie announced he was divorcing her as well as two other wives. In August 1974, UPI reported that Kay Amin's dismembered body had been discovered in the trunk of her doctor's car. The same doctor had died, allegedly by suicide, the day before her body was found. The official story was that she died after a botched abortion. The doctor tried to hide the body and then killed himself when he failed to do so, although there is little evidence of what actually happened. In the early 1900s, Joseph Stalin was already involved in revolutionary politics. At one point, he used a safe house owned by the Swanidza family in present-day Tbilisi, Georgia, according to Stalin, Paradoxes of Power. One of the family's three daughters caught Stalin's eye, and while he spent much of his time at the house working on political projects, he also got Kato Swanidza pregnant. In 1906, the pair decided to get married. While friends remembered Stalin as being very much in love with his wife, he also immediately abandoned her for the cause. During her pregnancy, Swanitsa spent six weeks in jail for the crime of marrying Stalin. When she gave birth, he was away. 
Finally, when facing charges of robbery in Tbilisi, Stalin moved his wife and son far from her family. Their new home, Baku, was not a good environment for Swanitsa, and she only stayed about five months before returning to her family. Once she was back home, she became deathly ill. While her exact cause of death isn't certain, it wasn't painless, since it was recorded that she was hemorrhaging blood from her bowels. While Stalin was distraught at her death, he took off again, abandoning his son for over a decade. After the death of Stalin's first wife in 1907, the dictator didn't marry again until 1918, a year after the Russian Revolution. So when Nadezhda Alloway wed the man 23 years her senior, she knew who he was, or at least what he might become. Stalin alternated between raging at her and ignoring her. By 1932, witnesses said she was completely beaten down by her husband and crushed by his extramarital affairs. After a fight, she said a final goodbye to her young children, then told the servants she wasn't to be disturbed. She was found dead the next morning, reportedly by suicide. For decades, her cause of death was covered up by the USSR, attributed to either appendicitis or heart problems. The silence was broken in 1988 when Russian playwright Mikhail Shatrov was asked about Stalin. Shatrov stated, His relations toward women? I know little about this question. We know about the suicide of his wife. In any case, Stalin was always crude. This casual reply was the first known time someone in the communist country publicly admitted how Stalin's second wife died. Career shares brilliant race all around because it is led by Kim Jong-il, successor to President Kim Il-sung. When it comes to the ruling family of North Korea, being extraordinary isn't good enough. On the 100th birthday of Kim Jong-suk, wife of North Korea's first president Kim Il-sung, politician Yang Hong-suk gave a speech touting her greatness, saying, Human history recorded a large number of famous women revolutionaries, but has not known such a prominent woman revolutionary and genuine patriot as Kim Jong-suk. Of course, when it comes to women in a hereditary dictatorship, there's only one thing that really counts, giving birth to a son. As Yang put it, she brought up leader Kim Jong-il as the rising sun, and thus gave the people the highest honor and happiness of being blessed with the illustrious leaders generation after generation. It was another pregnancy that would end her life at just 31 years old. Some reports say that it was due to an ectopic pregnancy, while others say she died from complications delivering a stillborn baby. Official North Korean reports, on the other hand, say she died because she had put all her strength into fighting for the country. Kim Jong-suk died in 1949, one year after the founding of North Korea. Her son, future dictator Kim Jong-il, was seven. Mao Fumei was the first wife of Chiang Kai-shek, the former dictator of China and Taiwan. The arranged marriage was disastrous from the start. Mao moved into the Chiang family home and watched as the dynamics of the household destroyed what little chance her marriage ever had. She later remembered, I kept quiet and seldom spoke. The situation went from bad to worse, and Kai-shek soon became impatient with me. I dared not say one word to defend myself. All I could do was to weep secretly over my utter helplessness. The marriage had been arranged by Cheng's mother, so it was only after she died that Cheng divorced Mao. He later wrote, For the past 10 years, I have not been able to bear the sound of her footsteps or seeing her shadow. After the divorce, Mao continued to live in the Cheng family home. In 1939, during the Second Sino-Japanese War, Japan's military tried to punish Cheng by bombing his hometown. Mao was killed by a bomb as she fled at the air raid warning. Later, her son with Cheng would lay a stone at the site of her death, reading, it takes blood to wash out blood. Yugoslavian dictator Josip Broz Tito married several times and didn't remember all his marriages fondly. When it comes to Tito's relationship with his first wife, Pelagia Belosova, fellow politician Milovan Gilas later said, It seemed as if he wanted to blot out every trace of it from his life and his memory. In 1936, while still married to Belosova, he met Johanna Koenig, who also went by Lucia Bauer, and quickly divorced Belosova to marry her. The marriage was a short one. In 1938, Bauer was arrested during Stalin's purge of potential political dissidents and sentenced to death after a sham trial. Shortly after her execution, Tito made a public statement expressing his disappointment in not noticing his wife's treachery. Bauer is not usually included on lists of Tito's wives, and author Neil Barnett writes that this was a deliberate cover-up. Tito was so secretive about his life, even his birth date is up for debate. Shortly before Tito died, he declared to his personal physician, If you think you know me and know who is Tito, you are hugely wrong, doctor. You do not know who is Tito, nor will you ever know. No one met Tito, nor will meet him. Eva Braun met Adolf Hitler in 1929 when she was 17 years old, and he was more than two decades older. While many people know the name of the woman who chose to be with one of the most infamous men in history, the biography Eva Braun, Life with Hitler, says that the public perception of her probably isn't accurate. Eva Braun is always portrayed as the dumb blonde who had the misfortune to fall in love with the devil, and this is an image that needs to be corrected. 
She was capricious, an uncompromising advocate of unconditional loyalty towards a dictator who went so far as to die with him, and he adored her. In the Führer bunker in Berlin towards the end of World War II, Braun was upbeat and through semi-secret parties. She was not living in reality. She tried to push away everything that was uh, disturbing her. Still only 33, she was staying with Hitler to the end, and they both knew it. And all the time they'd been together, he hadn't agreed to marry her, and in fact kept their relationship relatively secret. But as things came to a head outside, the two married in the bunker in a small and informal ceremony. Just a day and a half later, on April 30th, 1945, the now husband and wife sat alone in a room in the bunker before they both died by suicide. In many ways, it's astonishing that Nadezhda Krupskaya lived as long as she did. The wife of Vladimir Lenin, she was a key player in the young Soviet Union, but once Lenin died in 1924, some of her vocal opinions put her at odds with Joseph Stalin. As Toxic Politics explains, Stalin had getting rid of his enemies down to a science. It should have been simple to take out this interfering widow and revolutionary figure. Yet, 15 years after her husband's death, Rubskaya was still alive and talking. In the end, her death may have been sealed by a rumor she was going to openly denounce Stalin on her 70th birthday in 1939, according to a paper in the Journal of Education for Library and Information Science. Two days before her birthday, she got together with about a dozen friends for a quiet but fancy dinner. Within hours, she passed out, and despite being quickly put under the care of multiple doctors, they all refused to treat her. Their decisions not to act were encouraged by Stalin, as Toxic Politics records. Krupskaya died the day after her birthday, while the cause of death was blamed on everything from appendicitis to food poisoning to a blocked intestine, all sources give credence to the most logical explanation. Stalin had her poisoned. <laughs>